if you like to experience the illumination, you can concentrate between the two breath. When you between the when the breath between when the breath comes out and comes in, in this between time, then you will have the benefit of the illumination. Of course, what he meant is you must concentrate. Yeah? When you probably because in the daily life, this is not the one method alone, you know? Although you can do that. But we should use all these one hundred and twenty, uh, perhaps one hundred twenty. Or maybe one hundred twelve, one hundred twenty. Mm. We should use it in different circumstances in order to uh, concentrate our mind. So sometimes, uh, if you remember, I have also taught you uh, during daily activity, you should always remember, yeah, your wisdom center and repeat the five names. But should you forget, you know, even every activity you should concentrate. But it's very difficult for you, so you concentrate on the five names even while you are working. But you should not concentrate on the physical breath, but in between, you know what I mean? What he means, between the two breaths, one come out and one come in, is that the non-breath, the non-breathing being, that's what we should concentrate on. That means we should always remember the Almighty, the one without breath, the one that breath is not necessary, the one that breath cannot touch, etc., etc. You understand? This is only for the one who already understood the way of practice. It's not to go out and to teach the lay members of the society that to concentrate between the two breaths. Of course, concentration of any kind brings benefit, but not to the extent uh, as if we know where to concentrate and what to concentrate on. Is that not uh, clear to you? Is that clear? Okay. Uh, so, in our daily activities, we have a lot, a lot of work to do. Eh? So sometimes it's very difficult to just uh, remember the wisdom center. So, uh, in case you cannot, or in case you have to concentrate on your work, then there are ways we can convert work into practice. That's why the Buddha said there are 800, no, 84,000 ways of practice, and not, none of them is not a practice, uh, not a spiritual practice way. And here Shiva, to make it short, he can't just sit there <laughs> and, and uh, how I say, uh, at least uh, uh, 84,000 ways of Dharma practice, so he make it 112. That should be enough for you and for us, for me. <laughs> okay, so. What he means between uh, the breath is that constant remember, remember the non-being, yeah, the non-physical being, yeah. So when you remember, uh, I tell you, don't concentrate on the breath, yeah, mm. and do not pay attention to the physical sensation during initiation. You remember, okay. So that is what he meant as well. That's why he say. Concentrate, remember the one between the breath. Not that we concentrate between the breath only, <laughs> you know what I mean? Eh. Continuously so. Because he is afraid, perhaps if uh, he tell you, uh, I suppose, uh, maybe I'm wrong, later we will know, huh? And later maybe we read some more and then I will tell you more. Okay, there's a lot of <laughs> things to read and we're only the first one yet. <laughs> <sighs> So now, because he's, uh, I'm afraid if you concentrate on the breath, you will make uh, like a rhythm, you know what I mean? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And later, suddenly, someday, you experiment the, the how say, a state of non-breathing, and then you probably don't know <laughs> where to turn to uh, <laughs> for, for, for concentration. 
yeah, to go further than the breath, rhythm. Mm. And then you get stuck there. The second advice he gave to his wife and to all beings is this. Mm. When the breath turns from down to up, mean when you come, when the, you breathe out, yeah, and when you breathe in. Uh, you do not follow the breath, but when you breathe, for example, if you are an athlete, huh, maybe you are just running or you do some errand and you have to run fast, uh, then do not just uh, uh, do not uh, try to give yourself up to exhaustion. For example, when you breathe too hard, yeah, <laughs> like this, <laughs> then you should not uh, lose yourself in the uh, in the in the inner running, uh, but try to make use of uh, of the uh, try. If you cannot concentrate on anything else because you have to run, yeah, like you have to do sport and you have in competition, then you should better just uh, realize that the the breath is coming, the breaths come out, and then try to center yourself, yeah in the being behind all this breathing and behind all this exercising in order to centralize yourself, to be self-centered. And at that moment, you will also be, even, even though running, you will also be experienced enlightenment. Yeah. And so, of course, it makes your work easier. I hope I understood him and explained it correctly. If not, you can tell me later. If you know something better, you tell me, okay? The third. Mm. You know what? When people translate Shiva <laughs> teaching, it's already confusion. Because the one who translates, not necessarily did understood him, did understand him, yeah? And then the one who translates before him even, already make a mess. <laughs> so many translations, make more mess. I'm trying very hard to explain to you the way I understood. I hope I don't make <laughs> worse mess <laughs> than already has been made. <laughs> the third one, or oh, in the middle of the fusion of the two breath, yeah. Try to center on that. Of course, repeat the five names. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, in that case, then you will not uh, uh, try to hang on to the breath, but just to remember, something to remember. And then you repeat the holy names and then center yourself. Mm. So what he meant is whether you're working, you're running, or you're standing, you're walking, you still always can find something to concentrate and repeat the five names. If you happen to forget, you know, the, uh, the, the, how say, the wisdom center, because you probably have to run, yeah? You have to run and you have to look at the road. If you concentrate too much on the wisdom eye, <laughs> maybe you forgot <laughs> to look at the road and then you become uh, the last of the <laughs> competitor eh? instead of the first prize. Because this person do not, when he translated, perhaps he overlooked what Shiva meant inside by telling him to remember, uh, you know, the breathless being or the uh, uh, energyless ener energy field, you know what I mean? Like a gate without gate, and <laughs> gateless gate and things like that, yes. It's very difficult for anyone of any level to understand a master's secret teaching, and this is supposed to be very deep, very secret, transmitted from one master to one disciple. And if a lay person happened to hear it, he probably get confused, and never mind translating it, and then translate it from another translation, and that would be more confusion. Yeah. So I try my best eh, to make it clear for you. So the energyless, energyless, 
energy field center, <laughs> energyless energy, that can only mean the cosmos, yeah, can only mean the Almighty, the Supreme Master within every being. So, even while breathing and running fast, we still have to remember that center, yeah, if we can. Of course, it's, it is difficult. So people say, well, when, when I'm running, when I'm working, it's very difficult to remember. Okay, you don't have to remember the wisdom center, but you remember the wisdom being, the wise being, the being without, uh, you know, running. <laughs> the being that is always still. So, now, so in every action, we still can try to remember. Yeah? For example, when we're running fast, we try to remember the one who is still. That is our true self, our identification. Uh, yeah, our identity, for example, like that. That's what I understood. Huh? If I understood it wrong, well, please, the Indian, correct me. Is that correct, brothers? What, what do you think? Huh? <laughs> you are very humble. <laughs> I saw the Indian song. What do you think, uh, Devi, behind there? <laughs> you think it's okay? I'm trying my best. I don't know. I can't understand all this myself. <laughs> okay. The four advice Shiva gave to his disciples is like this. Also, when breath is all out, yeah, or all in. <laughs> mean when you breathe all out or when you inhale, just inhale enough in mm. and stop at that time, in the middle of that. Mm. In such a universal pause, uh, suddenly the small cell, the physical cell, vanish. This is very easy at that time to realize the whole the, the whole purity of true self. That's what the translation is supposed to mean. Huh? <laughs> All right. So, in this, what he meant is, before you breathe out again, or be, before you breathe in, oh, oh my God. Okay, I breathe for you. <laughs> eh? that, that is, is the moment, moment what he meant. meant. All went before, all went all out. Yeah, even in those instants, we have to remember the purity of our true being. He said, but it is very difficult. If you are impure, you will not remember that. You will always follow the breath <laughs> in and out, or follow your exhaustion of the body, and then forget completely. <laughs> the true identification of our being. Yeah? All right. The fifth is that, the fifth way remem to remember is that. Now, uh, uh, sometimes you forget, right? So you try to remember by consider, considering your own essence as light. And it comes in, uh, uh, how to say, uh, saturating uh, throughout your body. Yeah. At that time, you try, uh, by remembering so, you will awake, awake the l liveliness within yourself, awaken the true life force within ourselves again. Of course, at that time, don't do the guan guang, huh? because you can't, yeah? So at least try to consider, to remember that you are the light. Remember the experience you have when you meditate on the light and you saw the light. So at that time, when you cannot meditate on the light, at least try to remember, to consider that you are the light. Yeah, ti ta ta ta, okay? That's what I understand. <laughs> on the sixth, the six ways to remember. All the teaching here is just a way to try to, to defeat your mind's wandering tendency, everyday life. So in every situation, there are many ways to try to grip the mind back. You see, that's why he teach 
the disciples so many ways to control the mind. Because if you let the mind free for one second, it will think of all kind of garbage. Uh, therefore, there are 112 ways to catch the mind every day. <laughs> so you use one after another, perhaps you always try to remember the holy essence of our true being. Mm. The sixth advice is that. The space is between. <laughs> it makes it too short for me even to understand. Mm. Okay, okay. So sometimes, perhaps, when it rains, huh? according to here, uh, in the space between the lightning, between the different lightning, you know? Sometimes it, uh, in the storm, the lightning comes uh, one after another, right? So in between that, feel yourself as such powerful as the lightning of the universe. Even in the rain, you can remember God. <laughs> you can remember your own identity. That's perhaps what the Master meant. Unless any wiser person tell me otherwise, because I don't have the whole scripture here. I only have a very short, concentrated essence of the teaching, and we try to make the best translation out of it. Okay, interpretation. Yeah. Now, continue further. He spoke to her sweetly again. Devi, he called her goddess. Yeah, goddess. Imag imagine. You can also uh, try to remember God or to be enlightened by imagine, imagine, yeah? imagining the Sanskrit letters first as they are letters. You know, uh, for those Americans, I don't think you should imagine the uh, Sanskrit <laughs> letters, but the alphabet. It would be wiser for us. Yeah. <laughs> First imagine them one by one as letter, as physical letter, but later try to perceive more as sounds. Yeah, like A, B. Huh? And don't, don't have to speak out loud, but try to perceive them as the silent sound. Mm. And then transcends the sound, we enter the feeling. Try to feel the letters, vibration, instead of hearing the sound or seeing the written words. Is that clear? Okay. Suppose you are a teacher. <laughs> you have to teach ABC or English. Then perhaps uh, in some moment of the repose, right. yes, you probably cannot concentrate right away or you have to have a lunch break and you, your mind is still full of A, B, C, D, E, F, <laughs> then you make use of that as well. Turn around <laughs> and meditate on it. <laughs> At least you concentrate. You know what I mean? Suppose your mind is always full of work and you can't just in a moment of silence become immediately tuned in back to the five names or back to whatever awareness that you desire. Then uh, we make use of the situation. Yeah? And turn that into a concentration method <laughs> and meditate, concentrate until we can be aware again of our awareness and we are back to our control again. Then it's okay to repeat the five names and do the guan guan. <laughs> Suppose, you see, just like the American people say, if somebody give you lemon, make lemonade out of it. Huh? What else can you do? <laughs> it's too sour. <laughs> so we add some sugar and make it into a refreshing drink, yeah, or honey, yeah. So similarly, our minds is a wandering horse all the time. So in every situation, we have to try to use his own wandering power to turn it back into our own advantages of con concentration. Now you understand? Like yesterday, we say, the weeds in the garden, if we cannot weed them out, <laughs> then love them. <laughs> or try to make something else, try to make salad out of the <laughs> dandelion leaves. Yeah, that makes excellent salad and very nutritious. In fact, in Germany now, because it's so much developed, uh, the wild land is very hard to find. 
So those dandelion are a rare species. <laughs> so uh, if you want to buy them in the market, it's expensive. Yeah, more expensive than ordinary salad. I'm not kidding you. The, the German people, do, do you know? Is that true? No believe in German anymore. <laughs> you know, huh? You have the same in Switzerland, also more expensive than ordinary salad. Yeah, oh, I guess so, because people don't go into the wild anymore and pick these things. So uh, the, the few who does, yeah, sell them in the market and you don't get that many, you don't get plenty. Yes, I know that. Uh, last time we were in Germany, just recently, yeah, I showed them these disciples. Ah, this is what the one we pick, you want to pick yesterday, and uh, they, I used to pick before, and they wanted to buy, and they're expensive, <laughs> more more than the other salad. So don't look down upon these wild things. Nowadays, wild things are more expensive than the cultivated things. Uh, in the in the old time, it was contrary, right? Hmm. Why we go to eating right now? Terrible. <laughs> I must be hungry. I didn't have my my lunch yet. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh. Okay. Oh, well, let's go back to the Sanskrit letters. All right. If you are Indian, of course you imagine the Sanskrit letters first as a written word, and then as the sounds, and then as a feeling, and then after, finally leave all of them and be free free of all thinking or imagination or feeling or nothing. <laughs> Just sit there and enjoy, <laughs> okay? All right. Now, number eight. Mm. <clears throat> Suppose you have a moment of freedom yeah, and too short to do the light con uh, meditation, then you can Concentrate between the eyebrows, as you know, huh? you know where, huh? Yeah, wisdom center, perhaps, <laughs> and let your mind concentrate on on the space before every thought arises. You know where it is, yeah? Before all thinking started, before all desires sprout up. Concentrate on that, perhaps. In the Buddhist term, we call it emptiness, huh? empty space. Or we call them, well, yes, yes, the, the mindless place, yeah? thing like that, or the gateless gate. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> and then, whatever form supposed to come to your mind at that time, or maybe your own form, let it be filled with the universal life force. Imagine, maybe. And then you take a shower in this light, in this essence of the universe. Understand? Like, like you are taking a shower, but not the shower of water, but the shower of the universal light, of the universal uh, blessing and, uh, how say, illumination. Hmm? So in every circumstances, we can always try to uh, illuminate ourselves by using the circumstance, by using the busyness that we are at that moment and be at the present, at the present time. That's the best situation. Okay. So uh, in all the mundane activities, we can always practice. There's no need to say, I don't have time. I can't cross my legs and things like that. You can. Whenever you can, you do it. And whenever you cannot, you do it as you are working. Turn your work into meditation. Concentrate on the force behind all the works, behind all the running, behind all the activities. Then you will always find something to meditate upon. And there is always plenty of time. Because we can use the time of every situation for concentrating. Yeah, you get it now? Mm. Now, number nine. You can uh, liken your five senses as the five colors of the peacock tail. And then spread them all over <laughs> the space instead of spe spreading garbage like, <laughs> like they do here. 
just spread the five color pig cocktails all over the universe. Fill them with colors. Fill the universe with color. But this color is supposed to be your five sense. You understand? Perhaps smelling, tasting, touching uh, this sense. Hmm. Okay, now because of the pig cocktail color is very colorful and very beautiful, so you let these colors and beauty melt within yourself. And then anytime you feel that there is a limit, you spread them out until there's no more limit left. In that case, you dissolve all the frontier within your mind, and then thirst, whatever you wish well for other people will come true. So that's how you convert your power into limitless use. And that's how you can bestow benefit uh, on countless beings and be of a kind of a benefactor to all kind of people who surround you or who come in contact with you or whom you're praying for. Okay? <coughs> Hmm. You can also close your eyes yeah, and try to see your inner being in all details. And thus, while you're concentrating on the inner being, then you will see your true nature. Try to understand if you can. <laughs> if whatever the method you cannot use, just leave it. <laughs> and number eleven, Place your whole attention in your nerves, yeah? And uh, you should know that uh, the nerves are so delicate as the, as the thread of the lotus, within the lotus itself. And thus, you will transform your physical being. What he meant is, uh, if you can, is if it's so difficult to control the mind and try to to make him to make concent, make him concentrate in on such a delicate pattern, just as the nerves in our body. You understand what I mean? Because uh, you have never seen them before, so it is very difficult for the mind to imagine all these nerves, and it's good for him. It serves him well. <laughs> so that he will have no time to wander around and doing anything else. Yeah, suppose uh, maybe for many people it is suitable for them to 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 be complicated like that. Yes, because not all beings are alike. Alike, not all people are the same. So if for everybody to uh, to try to concentrate, he probably use a different kind of concentration, a dif different situation. In the Himalaya, perhaps you don't need all this complication. You only look at the snow, and then you, f you froze. <laughs> you froze in time and space. <laughs> and you know, the mind cannot run anywhere else, because after a while, he used to with emptiness, whiteness, and of the emptiness of the mountain. There's nothing there for him to fancy. After some time, perhaps all the desired all the habitual patterns that record in the mind will, will be exhausted, empty, and then he doesn't fill it back in with newspapers or television or bad movies. Then it stays at least half empty. That's why many masters favor Himalaya or the desert. Yes, I stay in the desert myself too. It was beautiful for some time, maybe two weeks. Until one day it was uh, some, some, something, it was very cold and I nearly collapsed. <laughs> and I had to run back to the, to the house, to the, to the, into the city. Not the city, but another place, it's a house. Because in the desert where I stayed there, there was no house, no water, no electricity. There is water, but we have to go and fetch it back, you know, very far away, about two kilometers or something. It's not directly from the tap like that. And there's nothing in that desert, only dry shrubs here and there, you know, and mouse. And, oh yeah, we have a rabbit. 
<laughs> the desert rabbit is so small, you can't imagine. You would thought it's a mouse. <laughs> yeah, pretty small, but looks like a rabbit. Yes. Just like me, I look small, but I am <laughs> I'm a human being. <laughs> Perhaps there's not much to eat in the desert, so the rabbit becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. 